So for our indie lab, we did um, blowing across a like glass bottle um, and filling it with different amounts of water to like change the frequency of the, the note that it produces. Um, yeah, so that's our purpose is to discover like how the volume of water in the bottle affects the um, tone produced by the bottle. So our hypothesis was we found two methods to determine the frequency created by the bottle of water and our hypothesis was that the Helmholtz resonance frequency which used pressures of air would be more accurate than the method we found in the Walker physics textbook because that was overly simplified. Yeah, it just had to do with like heights and volumes. So. so our diagram is a little bit weird because we were just blowing across bottles and then I used a tuner um, to measure the frequency of the note produced. Um, and so these are the three, we used three different bottles. Um, this was, yeah, so um, this round bottle is like the ideal for the um, Helmholtz resonant frequency. is a It's a round, uh, a spherical bottle with a really short neck. And then these two, um, we had to like uh, account for like the different shapes and stuff. So, so the method one was the book method method from the um, Walker Physics textbook, and it used um, harmonics. So. The first harmonic in a closed tube looks like that picture. One fourth of the wave is in the tube, and that gives the resonant frequency of the um, bottle. And so it works like the equation um, velocity equals frequency times length wavelength, because um, the wavelength is just um, four times the length of the bottle. So when you um, so you do velocity equals frequency times 4L, and it's that same equation. And I derived a big fancy equation to find the volume of water that I needed to add to the bottle to get a certain pitch because I was using lengths, so I had to change that into volumes in the bottle. And that's later we used that to play Mary Had a Little Lamb, but we'll do that later. <laughs> The second method is Helmholtz resonance, and it's a lot more complicated. And I have a video that would explain it better visually. So let's see if we can get that to work. Turn it up a little bit. Right, no. In the YouTube box there. First, Helmholtz resonance, making sounds by blowing in bottles. The bottle has to meet some minimum requirements. It has to have a large volume called the chamber, as well as a narrower volume called the neck, and a hole at this end of the neck. When air is forced into the bottle, like if we just blow into the opening, the air pressure in the bottle is increased. For a while, the air in the neck of the bottle acts like a sort of a massive plug, pushing in inward, building up the pressure. We can compare this to a spring with a mass at one end. The air in the neck is like the mass, and the air in the chamber is like the spring. The air in the neck, moving inward and compressing the air in the chamber, is like the mass pushing on the spring, compressing the spring. At some point, we run out of energy and the compression stops. The energy has all gone into compressing the air. At that point, the process reverses and the air starts to decompress, forcing the air in the neck back out. This pressure decrease continues and even goes too far as the pressure inside the bottle becomes slightly less than the room air pressure. Since the pressure inside is less than room pressure, the higher room pressure forces air back inside the bottle. That continues until it overshoots and the air pressure inside the bottle is again compressed. It then reverses again and so on. But each time the compression and decompression is less, with less and less energy to drive it, until finally it stops. The air pressure inside is the same as the air pressure outside. But that cycle of air going in and out happens at a consistent frequency, determined by things like the speed of sound in air, 
the cross-sectional area of the neck, the volume of the bottle here, and the length of the neck, so basically this point. This frequency is called the resonant frequency. More specifically, this is Hemholtz resonance, and the bottle is called Hemholtz resonator. If you're just blowing on a bottle to have it make a sound, the sound you hear as a sound wave is made by that air moving in and out of the bottle. And as I just said, the frequency depends on the geometry of the bottle. So that's why the sound is different for different size bottles. those axes? So it's the it's L distance traveled by the wave in um, divided by or times 4F. So solving the equation from before um, the F equals L or 4L times B. Um, and for the next method, um, it was a lot more complicated to solve for the speed of sound and air. But so they're really complicated axes. And those all curved sort of the other way. They started a little lower and curved up. Um, but once they got past this initial point, they seemed more linear. Um, so here's our when we calculated the volume to put in each bottle, this is what we got. So you could hear what our conclusion was, which one was more accurate in this. You'll be able to tell. Hopefully this plays. Two bottles, the book method was a lot more accurate. 
and that might be because we, where does the neck end here? We did it from here, but it might have been from there that we were supposed to do it from, and the radius was changing throughout, and we had to use the radius of the neck. So the book method was a lot more accurate for those, but for this one, the Helmholtz resonance method was actually more accurate, but just a little bit. But that is the ideal bottle for that, where the neck is simple, and so that worked better there. But for just any bottle, the book method actually works better, which surprised us. Simple. Thank you. We have time for one question. Cool, thanks again.